स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello all welcome back to our sessions on precision oncology last class we have got a very basic introduction of cancer immunology we have really went into the history of the cancer immunology we have learned about immunosurveillance we have understood what colis toxins are and we got exactly the introduction of the innate and the uh, adaptive immune responses here we will continue our work uh, our sessions on uh, cancer immunotherapy just coming back you know uh, to the basics first you have your adaptive immunity and their innate immune uh, uh, mechanisms so the major cells of the, uh, your adaptive immune uh, response are your b and t cells with specific antigen receptors here do you see them so these uh, t cells are differentiated are uh, divided into two populations by differentiation in the expression of your you have your t helper cells and your uh, cd8 cytotoxic uh, t cells so this cd4 t helper uh, cells are further subdivided into your th1 il2 il5 which secrete and your th2 this is all the uh, regular basics and then p b lymphocytes also have a role in your adaptive immunity by recognition of your uh, foreign uh, antigen through various b cell receptors and thereby a lot of your uh, antibody production uh, happens then you have your antigen presenting uh, cells which are apcs which are uh, essential for your uh, very very essential for your uh, adaptive uh, immunity and especially this apcs are your first antennas for our uh, uh, cancer immunotherapies these are essential for your uh, adaptive immunity they interact with your th and the t helper and the cytotoxic uh, t lymphocytes this innate uh, immunity response which resp represents uh, this is like for your general your regular antibody infections and uh, regular viral infections this is all our uh, innate uh, immune response happens they are they, this is like an immediate and this is by in, inborn uh, innate uh, mechanisms and this usually occurs by uh, uh, usually a this is occurs by the the environmental pathogens or uh, harmful uh, uh, any other harmful effects of the chemical your macrophages produced inf inflammatory mediators here so what we can uh, see here such as your il1 your il6 whatever uh, here whatever we all see here this is here and then uh, uh, you have even your basophils and your eosinophils also which form a part of your innate mechanism this is with respect then you have very very one crucial uh, cells such as your dendritic cells and then uh, you have even the complement pathways as part of your innate cells then you have your this uh, activated natural killer cells which are uh, which produce a number of cytokines such as your ifn alpha your tnf alpha recollect in your uh, basics of uh, cancer biology we were uh, discussing about the cytokines then your gmcs uh, csf and then your very importantly your uh, stimulating your uh, uh, cs uh, your uh, cytokines very important like ccl1 ccl2 ccl3 4 5 and eight this uh, these dendritic cells represent the central regulators of your specific immune uh, re responses they will be presenting your uh, antigens to to, uh, to the helper t cells and b this is all the basics then now coming uh, what happens we will introduce to the uh, small terms like so this is how exactly uh, your uh, t cell and then your antigen uh, present how do these two cells uh, interact you have very very fantastic uh, receptors usually and these uh, many of this uh, ligands which are represented by your antigen presenting cells they can bind to many many multiple receptors and they deliver stimulatory or uh, uh, or inhibitory uh, signals this inhibitory uh, signals are referred to as your immune checkpoints which we will see in the next slides antagonistics of your stimulatory signals or those which are anti uh, inhibitory antagonistic of your inhibitory signals they will be uh, resulting in a cascade of your amplification of your specific t cells usually activation of your t cells uh, as we have seen last time requires two uh, two signals which are delivered by your ap antigen presenting cells the first signal uh, is uh, is antigen presented in the form of 
your peptides we all know right all these peptides are processed by your major histo compatibility uh, complex mhc complex this peptide is recognized by this uh, uh, t cell receptors by the t cell receptors here these peptides are recognized and they are uh, and they uh, uh, and uh, this interaction provides specificity it is a very specific t cell response the second apart from this particular uh, uh, regular uh, signal you even have a co-signaling stimulatory ligands on apcs these co-signatory uh, ligands will be uh, will interact with the corresponding receptors on the t cell surface sometimes without a co-stimulatory uh, interactions the t cell will will not uh, will either die or they become energetic how do cancer cells uh, become uh, tolerant to this immune system? What did we first discuss? We discussed that cancer cells have to evade the host immune re response. That they have to be now if they are they do not have to be recognized as foreign. They can become tolerant to this immune system by upregulating the expression of your immune checkpoint molecules like your P program cell death. This is a very, very important ligand PDL pro program cell death molecule. So, here and then uh, which leads to peripheral T cells by the time uh, the because of this prolonged ex uh, expression of your PDL1, it leads to peripheral T cell exor uh, exhaustion, what we have discussed last time, or loose surface antigen expression, which leads to immunological escape. Your immune check point inhibitors what do they do they will bind to this suppose you have anti pdl1 this will the monoclonal antibodies will bind to this particular or uh, anti pdl1 and these inhibitory compounds currently uh, they are used in currently uh, used in pharmacological interventions using the different three different ligands we will be talking about this particular three different ligands as I mentioned, this is this table will give you about what are the different uh, co-inhibitory. This is on the antigen presenting cell and this is on the T cells. The T cells require your very much as I said your co-stimulatory signal for optimal pro proliferation, differentiation and survival making co-stimulation ne necessary to produce a immune response. This can cancer uh, uh, the uh, immunity, uh, immunotherapy has received it was it has received a lot of breakthrough only after the uh, uh, they have established this particular co-stimulatory uh, receptor ligand pairs you know that is when they totally understand not only the the ligand even a co-stimulatory ligand uh, receptor ligand pairs are also very very important for example if at all you are having you are able to block any of this uh, co-stimulatory and a co-inhibitory pathways they you are uh, or maybe if you can optimize the use of this co-stimulatory and co-inhibitory pathways it has a potential to increase the uh, effective uh, T cell mediated uh, anti tumor immune response. So, thereby you can increase the efficacy of your cancer immunotherapy. Cancer immune, immune, immune checkpoint molecules they refer to a group of immune receptors that upon interaction with their ligands they stim in a transmit an inhibitory sip, uh, signal to suppress your effector function very simple itself there is nothing like first we talked about what exactly are this particular where exactly you have a ligand and then you need to have a co-stimulatory molecules and this what are these immune this is a checkpoint molecule do you these uh, maintain do these checkpoint molecules are they important in the normal function yes this important pathways inhibitory pathways they are very very crucial for maintaining the self to tolerance and regulating the uh, the intensity and duration of immune response in your peripheral tissues to mini minimize the tissue pathology and the same pathways uh, can be used to for, for transfer to, immu to evade tumor, tumor, tumor immunity. So, is not it wonderful that the, whatever is existing these pathways are only uh, being used for your cancer immunotherapy. Can we have a blockade of immune checkpoint? Yes, they can be blockade. And this blockade of these particular inhibitors, if you have inhibitors for your, as I said, anti PDL1, they will be effective in a uh, variety of tumors that are refractive to. For example, this particular immune checkpoint therapies, sometimes the patient is not responding to a particular chemotherapy or a radiation. Yes, anti PDL1 monoclonal antibody along with your radiation therapy. 
this uh, immune checkpoint uh, it is yes they are very well currently approved by your US FDA administration for the treatment of various cancer types and have significantly improved clinical outcomes and survival. Antigen presenting cells process and express antigens including your tumor antigens. Do you recollect we were talking about tumor specific antigens or the neo antigens in the last uh, session and uh, so if at all what a wonderful it is like you have a specific antigen. On major these are recognized on MHC complexes which are recognized by your receptors on T cells and they stimulate a cascade either to kill either to kill the expressing uh, the antigen via your CDG, uh, CD, uh, CD8 effector cytotoxic T cells or they will recruit your other components of the immune system via your CD4 plus helper T cells. This gives a complete again your uh, overview. These are the different families. Uh, you have the uh, BCCD28 families, you have the TIM families, and then you have the immunoglobulin super family, nectin and nectin like families, and the BTN and the uh, BTN like uh, uh, families. So, you have different all this uh, immune cheprite uh, molecules and the um, uh, co receptor, co inhibitory receptors. Uh, including your uh, immune uh, uh, which cause your immune suppressive conditions in the TMV they are all differently grouped. So, this slide will represent your overview of your several immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, co inhibitory receptors causing immune conditions in your uh, tumor microenvironment. You have the different fam families like such as your uh, BCCD28 families, your TIM family and then your immunoglobulin super family, then the nectin and nectin like family and the uh, BTN and the BTN like family. You see very how nicely all these different different receptors are recept represented here. On the CTLs you have the T uh, sorry the C T cells you have the CTL4 then you have the PDL1 then you have the CD80, PD1, Vista then CD60, BTLA. This, these are all coming please keep make in keep in mind your B7, CD28 families of yeah, yeah, of uh, co inhibitory receptors. Please keep in mind this B, um, that B7, CD28, these are all very important co inhibitory receptors because we will be looking in detail into them when we talk about our CAR T therapies also. So, here this is like again your uh, TIM families has your TIM3 and then here where they will have the receptors such as your, uh, your uh, CEA, CAMT, and uh, galactin. And then uh, whatever uh, here your immunoglobin super families has this particular receptors. You have different immune checkpoint molecules are expressed on T cells and these uh, this whatever uh, uh, this uh, uh, immune checkpoint molecules are expressed which are expressed on your T cells uh, they are uh, shown along with their ligers ex uh, expressed on your uh, antigen presenting cells is not it is on your antigen presenting cells or on the uh, T cells or on tumor cells and or T cells which uh, trigger a co inhibitory signal molecule. Now, cancer evades the immune system. We all know this is all we have established, we have totally understand it's a very established fact and we totally understand the guess for its survival. How does it uh, by use of regulatory cells and then it uses anti-inflammatory cytokines, then it has uh, decreased uh, stimulatory receptors and then defective antigen presentation, T cell uh, tolerance and evading of your uh, FPOP process. Now coming to your uh, anti, this is like a regular uh, uh, how and uh, like uh, you recollect we were discussing in the last class anti tumor uh, immunity how exactly isn't it a very fantastic like you know uh, tu tumor uh, your T cells recognize tumor anti antigen which uh, triggers T cell activation and then uh, suppose if everything it is presented by your your MHC class molecule the MHC class. T cells are always the preferred immune cell cells against targeting in cancer through the capacity to, to kill t they have a capacity to kill your uh, ma malignant tumor cells upon recognition by the T cell receptors. This is your this are your t, t cell receptors and then uh, uh, which is presented only by your MHC molecule. This MHC molecules uh, class 1 can be down regulated on tumor cells either the see for is not it like so what happens if they can be down regulated in tumor cells uh, and on CD8 T cells they are so obviously your CD8 uh, T cells they cannot recognize they and uh, they will not be able to recognize tumor cells. Furthermore, you even have your uh, loss of uh, uh, antigen variant on tumor cells which leads to uh, tumor recognition by CD8 uh, T cells.
then T cells are also uh, so this is all non classical uh, HLA mo molecules T cells are not able to recognize their tumor cells because of your loss of the variant. Then and another one is T cell activation uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, completely uh, inhibited. So, now how is this happening here? Here you can uh, clear, clearly uh, see, see that uh, T cell uh, they, are in, uh, they are inhibited by the in, uh, involvement of your inhibitory receptors and their corresponding ligands here. Uh, uh, then immunosuppressive cytokines, cytokines are uh, uh, which will lead to suppression of your anti tumor uh, response are expressed. And then uh, uh, then your regulatory T cells, your T regs, which is your, which are here, they will be, uh, uh, they will uh, suppress the T cell response to tumors by where in your uh, uh, myeloid derived suppressor cells they accumulate and suppress anti tumor T cell response. This is in just by how your uh, how the immune response is evaded by your T cells. The, now we got introduced to the term. Uh, TILs last last class. Suppose there is a lot of TILs, presence of uh, TILs, it requires a good prognosis for uh, what are TILs, tumor infiltrating lymphocyte, lymphocytes. They represent a lymphocytic uh, population. For example, uh, as I told you before, always keep in mind never, never a cancer cell is only cancer cell per se. This is a perfect diagram from BioDrender where you see your tumor cells, your cancer associated. You, you, you recollect in the last class like we were talking about um, you know, how a t tumor uh, TME in uh, pancreatic cancer, how does it look like? It has a lot of uh, uh, lymphocytes which represents your CD4, then there are a lot of cytokines re re released and there are many growth factors. These are your macrophages, then these are your uh, tumor cells then. You have many other different cells, you know, that uh, and these cells, uh, you know, they exert divert effects on the, uh, there is a lot, not only uh, uh, like what uh, towards the tumor uh, uh, sustenance and they they have a lot of effect on the immune response. So subsequent to antigen stimulation by your uh, antigen presenting cells, mm, uh, your you you have the activated CD4 T helper cells. These cells stimulate CD, C, uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes by IL2 secretion and cell cell interaction through your co-stimulatory molecules, including your MHC class two molecules. Um, uh, the C CD27 and CD134. Cancer cells by producing CD18, they recruit your T regs. Very, very important as I mentioned in my uh, last slide. Here you even have the cancer stem cells which are have the stainless uh, markers such as your CD24, CD44, CD47. Then you have the self renewal pathways which are activated your ally such as your uh, WNT, your beta catenin, then you have the hedgehog, then you have the increase in your EMT, then all this will lead to increase in drug resistance. And then you have the uh, tumor relapse and the tumor reoccurrence occurs. This is like you know. Uh, you ha have uh, interaction with all your uh, different different uh, even your non uh, cytotoxic CD8 T cells also lead to your uh, cancer stem cells. So, different see if you see all this uh, cells your natural killer cells, your dendritic cells, um, MD my, uh, myeloid de derived suppressor cells, then your tumor associated macrophage, the T lymphocyte, T regulatory cells all these are which are parts. The same colors are represented in this particular uh, the tumor, this is the tumor, the whole tumor pass and here this is your blood vessel. Uh, as a result, this is so what happens in uh, your T lymphocyte, there is your uh, increased in uh, P PDL1 expression, then decrease in CD4 and CD8 T cell proliferation and th therefore it is like uh, or a decrease in anti tumor uh, response. So, and then what will it uh, lead to, again it will increase lead to your cancer stem cell. Uh, pathways which are all triggered. Then your regulatory cells, cells what will happen? There is increase in population expansion. So, there is an increase in immunosuppressor eff uh, effective plasticity such as your T70 Treg balance. It is like this is like supposing you have your uh, TILs, the then tumor infiltrating lymphocytes which is always uh, represent. How do we, uh, the, how does this uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes uh, play a role? 
we have even introduced ourselves uh, last time to one another concept called immune exhaustion what, what, what exactly we totally defined it which and this immune exhaustion it also uh, contributes to immune dysfunction in cancer what happens the activation of your t cells is regulated by the uh, balance of inhibitor that is a checkpoint and a stimulatory pathway which we have already uh, um, established and this is very very critical in your normal healthy cells to prevent your autoimmunity that is self tolerance and to protect normal tissues when the immune system is activated against a pathogen. During uh, long term antigen stimulation, that is exactly what happens when you are uh, cancer. Your uh, effector function of CD8 D cells gradually decreases and this phenomena is known as the exhaustion. The process of T cell differentiation into effector and memory C cells is altered and this, uh, this whole switch is happening towards a particular stage called exhaustion. In your have inhibitor uh, receptors may act during both immune activation and ongoing immune response. T many during chronic inflammation also, these T cells they become exhausted and they upregulate a wide range of non redundant inhibitor receptors that limit their effectiveness. The whole purpose of your T cell effectiveness is totally lost when, when you have the increase in your receptors such as your. PD1, CDLA4, and your T cell immunoglobulin. This uh, interaction of the between the inhibi uh, between inhibitory receptors and their ligands, it will uh, reinvigorate uh, uh, intratumor uh, CD8 T cells. Now, just a very brief overview: how the t uh, how, uh, receptors are associated with inhib uh, immune uh, uh, inhibition and dysfunction. So, supposing you have programmed cell death protein one PD1. It is expressed by the your CD4, CD8, B lymphocytes, dendritic cells, uh, mono, monocytes, mast cells, and Langerhans cells. It binds to its PDL1 and PDL2 ligand. Where are this ligand expressing cells? It has it in the antigen presenting cells, and it is there in your uh, CD4 T cells, non lymphoid cells, and some tu tumor cells. You very, very important here is again your T lymphocytes associated protein 4, CTLA4. This also is very important which is like uh, it, uh, it is expressed by your CD4 activated or even by exhausted T reg CD8 tumors and it has this uh, ligand as CD18 and CD86 and it is like this uh, these two ligands are expressed by your antigen presenting cells. Then the lymph lymphocytes, this is a very, very brief uh, uh, examples I have kept it here only for our reference uh, for, uh, uh, for your uh, uh, CD4 uh, expressing uh, cells and the CD8 and uh, uh, the natural killer cells express this LAC3 and the ligands are your MHC class 2 and the uh, L-sectin and the ligand expressing uh, cells are your antigen presenting cells and then some tumors. Here we have uh, now we know we have totally established what are immune checkpoints. Okay, well, how can we? So if you target this cell membrane receptors, it is possible with mo uh, such monoclonal antibodies. Yes, and this can mimic or block the effector of a receptor or a ligand, and thereby they can enhance your immune response. Here you can see that you have the ligands. That is like your um, uh, uh, antigen presenting cells like uh, BH7, like uh, your uh, PD1, PDL1, L2, P, uh, CD60, CD66. You have the blocking antibodies, we will be discussing about them in detail. And then you have your T cell which will be, uh, which will have the receptor, inhibitor receptor C. Very fantastic, your antigen presenting cells and your uh, uh, T cells. And here also you have some more antibodies and this and the like and directed antibodies are also there. This uh, recognition of this complex you know it totally occurs via your T cell receptor. However, your T cell are typically requires an additional sequel signal just not like by recognition of this definitely an uh, addition. This activation of this uh, uh, T cells is further regulated by the uh, balance of your uh, T cell uh, of the inhibitor that is your checkpoint and this core stimulatory factor which are critical in healthy subjects to prevent autoimmunity and to protect normal uh, tissue, uh, normal tissues when the immune system is activated against a pathogen.
many many uh, immune checkpoints or co stimulatory molecules like such as these you know on the apcs and receptor they have been very much identified and several people several groups have worked on this this um, having if you have a monoclonal antibodies where you can block any of this and then definitely yes there is a better immune response this is a typical mechanism of action again uh, here you have the tumor cells and then you have the pd1 then this is the immunatory system you have the re uh, reinvigoration of your t cells after inhibition of the interaction you have uh, supposing uh, you have the reverse signaling via your pd uh, l1 favors tumor growth and anti apoptotic uh, process this PDL1, with the, this it, it will promote the growth of the tumor cells. Uh, where with the antigen uh, presenting cells, you know the stimulatory such as your CD80, CD28, 86, and the CTL4, uh, promoting CD28 over CTAL4 signaling after C CTLA4 blocking. You have even the red T regs, your regulatory cells, where uh, after you deplete them by your anti CTLA monoclonal antibodies. This is the anti mechanism of an uh, antibody uh, anti uh, action of uh, antagonists. You have the cytotoxic uh, T lymphocyte associated protein 4 CTL4 inhibitor. CTL4 was first described by uh, Leach et al. Uh, in 1996 as a receptor on T cells where it acts as a physiological break on the T cell activation. It competes with your CD28 receptor. Uh, stimulatory receptor uh, on the T cell. Both bind with your CD80 and CD86 ligands, also known as B7, B, B71 and B72 respectively. And these are C, which are seen on antigen presenting like antigen presenting cells. But CTLA4 has a very high affinity for these two uh, uh, ligands than originally your CD28 has. If you block CTLA4 B7 interaction, it favors B28 B7 interactions. As a result, there is more increased in production of your T cells, then increased T cell survival, and further leading to activation of your uh, T effector cells and increased diversity uh, T cell response on tumor. This is a uh, Ipilimumab, this is a mechanism, a mechanism of action, this is a, a, a drug and then uh, the T cell activation uh, requires stimulation through both the, the T cell receptors and your CD28, here you can see. Binding of your B7 family uh, proteins here, very fantastic right, you have a T cell then you have an antigen presenting, supposing the binding of this particular uh, uh, B7 family proteins to CTLA4, it inhibits your T cell function, CTLA4 therefore your T cell function is totally inhibited. Now here CTLA4 expression increases in parallel with your uh, with, uh, uh, with T cell uh, receptor stimulation thereby servicing as a break on T cell response. Anti -C CTLA4 uh, uh, antibodies here as you see such as your epilimab, these are monoclonal antibodies, they block your here, here can you see, here how is this mechanism here and how is this, they will be blocking your uh, CTLA4 binding to your B7, is not it fantastic, you have your co-signaling pathway, uh, pathway which is the totally being targeted here and they prevent your uh, inhibition of the T cell, the T cell uh, function, what will happen here? Here the effective function is your T cell is inhibition in here your T cell remain active. This is a very very uh, 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 path breaking research for uh, epilimab and there are many several clinical trials for both melanoma, non squamous cell lung carcinoma which is serving as which is improving the patient response rate. Here again we are coming again to one more uh, immunotherapy very very famous uh, molecule programmed uh, death one or uh, programmed cell death one. So this uh, people at uh, Kyoto University they discovered the gene which encodes the PD encode uh, PD one and the PD one receptor also known as your CD two seven nine and which is a transmembrane protein receptor which is not detectable on resting T cells but is highly expressed by your activated T cells. Please keep in mind. Two high lichens have been identified here for your PD1 such as your PD uh, L1 and your PD L2. 
by these different groups and they developed uh, human monoclonal uh, first initially they developed human antibodies against PD adverse and its uh, ligand. They found that anti tumor effects in mice are also were observed with this surrogate antibodies to mouse PD1 and PDL1. You have a very famous nivolumab, a fully which is very, very uh, fully human uh, monoclonal uh, uh, IG, IgG4 antibody, which binds very specifically to the uh, PD1 receptor and it is very much used for your clinical development for not only for lung cancer but for even the breast cancer. So, nivolumab was also able to block the interaction uh, of PD1 with both its uh, ligands. This is again another path breaking immunotherapy for uh, cancer. They, uh, uh, this is a uh, very, very active clinical uh, trial. You have it is very well documented both PD1 and CTL4 uh, pathways uh, have uh, non reductant roles. Immune checkpoint inhibitors like your uh, P antibodies they can attach to this particular to their co inhibitory receptors, thereby reactivating your immune response against tumor cells. The different groups of uh, IH, uh, clear, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, ICIs, so they include your nivolumab, your uh, premrolizumab and the semiplimab and PLA, uh, P, uh, PDL1 inhibitors, very, very important and they are very well successful in many clinical uh, trials. Etizolimumab, durvalumab and evilumab and CTLA4 inhibitor that is what we have seen, how nicely we have seen right in that diagram. These are all have been approved by the US FDA for the treatment of various types of cancer. As I mentioned this is very very highly selective, this uh, binding of your T, uh, T cell receptor and your MHC, it will acti activate the adaptive uh, immune response. The binding of uh, uh, your PD1 and PDL1 can pre prevent your signaling. Uh, uh, tra transaction of the T cells to inhibit the immune response. Whereas, your anti PD1 uh, antibody here you can see this particular antibodies here, uh, here this is all this uh, antibodies here. They, uh, the, they can reverse the inhibition on the of this particular interaction. They please note here cancer cells the, how do they escape uh, immune response by over expressing. PDL1. This immune system is activated not only by diseases, whereas PDL1 inhibits the immune system by preventing foreign antigen specific T cells from accumulating and reducing antigen specific CD8 T cell proliferation. Please note here the increase in PDL1, which is called by which is expressed by this particular cells, it will inhibit the immune system by preventing foreign antigen specific T cells from accumulating and reducing uh, antigen specific CD8 positive T cell proliferation. This again is a very fantastic dragman which talks about you know how the anti tumor uh, immune response by a PD1 blockade by a nivolumab is achieved here. Very fantastic figure like the earlier one. For example, uh, you have the recognition of uh, tumor by T cells through the MHC antigen interaction, which mediates your IFN gamma uh, gamma release and PDL1 and PDL2 upregulation. On this is the very uh, first thing uh, what it uh, uh, happens. So, as we have seen in the previous slides, you have your upregulation. Your PDN1 interaction uh, uh, it uh, it mediates inhibitory inhibition of T cell anti tumor immune response. Then uh, here uh, you have the priming and activation of T cells through your MHC antigen and CD28 uh, B7 interactions with your antigen presenting cells. See here how does it hap happen here. This also it uh, inhibits your um, T cell activation. You have the T cell anti tumor uh, response is inhibition and your T cell activation is inhibited. Then you, rec you have the recognition of tumor by T cells through MHC antigens and which mediates your IFN gamma results and PDL1 uh, and uh, PDL2 upregulation on your uh, tumor here. Here, can you see this? How even it happens here also. What happens when nivolumab happens? There is blockade of PD1 and your PDL2, which results in reactivation of your anti tumor response.
So, can you see here how this blockade did? See here, this is completely happen. Uh, this is completely this whole uh, it binding happens. But whereas here, once there is a blockade, what will happen? Your complete uh, uh, reactivation of your anti-tumor immune response. This uh, strategy behind your immune uh, checkpoint blockade is to reverse your, is to reduce the inhibitory signal and restore the pre patient's natural uh, tumor specific T cell mediated response which is uh, uh, achieved by this particular the monoclonal antibody. Very, very important function and very, very successful uh, uh, clinical, many trials have been uh, uh, enrolled for this particular. Your uh, the this uh, very uh, this particular uh, drug uh, this will uh, result clause in the blockade of your PD1 and your PDL1 and L2 and reactivation of your anti tumor uh, response. After since the advent of this particular uh, drug, there has been a uh, durable response and uh, there has been an increase in overall 5 year survival uh, rates for 20 percent of this patients who receive this uh, particular drugs. This is an example of the different uh, drugs you know and these are the different uh, pharma names and these are the different manufacturers and there have been very well successful you even have it in your uh, metastatic uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma then uh, made for even and this is not only used per se in the monoclonal but along with your as I mentioned for uh, in the surgery or with the other uh, radiation procedure. This is your uh, different landscape uh, for over the time from 27 over the 2017 and 2018 where uh, different uh, uh, clinical trial for PD-1, PD-L1 immune checkpoint inhibitor drugs. Uh, these are all the different uh, uh, trials which they have used and many many uh, are in uh, still in progress and uh, um, each bubble here the number here you it represents the number of clinical trials for example they are going to use this particular uh, drugs with in conjugation with the other uh, particular targeting uh, drugs pathway targeting drugs like and even like for example a chemotherapy and then your uh, CTL4 or a radiotherapy and your uh, or CTL4 or your uh, other pathway. Now coming to another uh, term which we will introduce is your pre predictive uh, biomarkers. Please just uh, one thing go back to your uh, uh, cancer detection methods where we totally discussed about what exactly are the biomarkers. Now uh, we have sto shown that you have a ligand then you have a receptor. Now can we check this PDL1 status before you proceed further for uh, the treatment of the patient? Yes, it is possible. And then this you check it like uh, you, as I said, that's your this is your tumor uh, microenvironment which represents uh, heterogeneous milieu of cells. Before uh, then, uh, the, since both immunocytes and your cytokines here, you know, they all play a very good role in uh, mediating immunosurveillance and regulating tumor. Uh, tumor uh, cells this uh, heterogeneous nature of your tumor will have a very very uh, fantastic uh, effect in uh, influencing the efficacy of this immunotherapy. These markers which uh, are measured using uh, there are many well well validated uh, in vitro use uh, uh, assays even like your uh, fish and then your uh, IHC and then you even have your uh, uh, NGS which we have dis uh, dis uh, discussed before. They can uh, uh, help in uh, maybe if you can go for your uh, PDL1 status, what is a tumor mutation burden? They can help in enrichment of the patient pro, uh, population for clinical trials, and then you, you can stratify the patient easy PDL1 positive, PDL2 positive. Now, how do we go about with the tra treatment strategies? So, another immunotherapy frontier is your cancer vaccines. So, they are uh, there are like uh, it has been a subject of uh, very well uh, review, and many of them have. Uh, uh, question what exactly the antigen can be which can be introduced can do you want to introduce a whole tumor or tumor cells proteins peptide based vaccines then you have your RNA then you have your DNA and then uh, your uh, dendritic cells proteins we will not be talking into all but very briefly uh, current uh, vaccines we will see how they are uh, classified now, what is known of uh, based on what is known of a tumor specific Re, uh, re, immunogenic antigen or which uh, patient's tumor express those antigens how the antigens become co-localized uh, with uh, professional antigen presenting in cells. 
first thing vaccines can uh, uh, be uh, I can incorporate either predefined or anonymous antigens which is like we really know what exactly this uh, particular antigen. They require predefined vaccines required your identification of antigens either by your tumor biopsy and communicational uh, analysis. Is it a personalized vaccine? Yes. So, are these antigens uh, defined before treatment? Sometimes if you have no this algorithm says then are there uh, are these antigens are they loaded into your antigen presenting cells outside the body if they are no is it through the in situ or through the XV, ex vivo. So, tumor cells lysates containing antigens of the excited tissues are loaded into your autologous antigen presented uh, cells and they are injected back into the patient. Are uh, antigens expressed in many patients with the same tumor? Type. This is very, very, uh, is it like, is, isn't it a fantastic when when the same tumor, uh, 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 many patients express the same antigen, then personalized, it, it is not a definitely personalized, uh, but uh, if it is not, uh, but cancer specific mutations, they produce novel epitopes or neo epitopes or neo antigens what we discussed and these are uh, uh, only specifically expressed only on specific cancer cells from select patients or maybe and sometimes this is a very broad group this is shared yes for predefined antigens. So, cancer specific mutations uh, produce mutagens that antigens that are highly expressed in the same cancer type but in many patients. Anonymous antigen vaccines can co-localize antigens with uh, APCs in the laboratory or directly at the tumor. This is the mechanism of your uh, action. For example, mechanism of cancer vaccine in uh, in vivo. After uh, you have the after you have the uh, uh, tumor antigens which migrate to the antibody in various different forms, they are phagocyt they are phagocytized and then uh, uh, intracellularly expressed and efficiently processed by your uh, APCs, your typical APCs. Then uh, the major uh, histocompatibility complexes of your dendritic cells, uh, they uh, present antigens to their surface and MXC complex antigen uh, 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 specific T cells by binding. Uh, this MHC complex will activate your uh, T cells antigen specific T cells by binding to your T cell receptors and on the surface of the T cells therefore safely persistently and specifically destroying only a tumor cells and inhibiting tumor growth. This is like a very a soluble antigen is presented your T cell priming and activation happens your CD4, CD8 mechanism then your T cells will migrate and they will infiltrate your tumor recognized in killing your specific antigen uh, cancer cells and again further more antigens is released from your tumor. The first type is only a simple simple or small amount where this itself will cause an uh, exocrine release of uh, several more antigens which will in turn cause T cell primering and uh, activation thereby uh, reducing the uh, uh, thereby trying to increasing the T cell response. So, first thing what is very 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 important here is your T cell again as we mentioned about your tumor specific uh, antigens or tumor associated antigens you need to have an optimal uh, tumor antigen selection in cancer vaccine. You have the uh, categorization of your four vaccine types or what is known as the predefined versus uh, anonymous and then which where patients uh, tumors express those TIAs uh, shared versus personalized and how antigen presenting cells. Now they encounter and load TAS uh, ex vivo versus your in situ. Here, your shared uh, your shared uh, antigen vaccines target antigens commonly present expressed uh, um, across multiple uh, uh, cancer vaccines, targeting specific mutations in your individual tumor, making them off shelf and low cost uh, uh, immunotherapies. This is a how a distinct uh, tumor is um, uh, totally tar targeted by uh, your specific T cells. This is like uh, uh, tumor antigens uh, uh, as I mentioned like uh, you even are based on the uh, you have the shared antigens and the public antigens which contain the 
hotspot mutations. What are hotspot mutations? Uh, which is uh, which is almost pro most uh, very very uh, frequently uh, uh, mutations by a uh, and then uh, by a relatively low common. Uh, they target your tumor associated antigens and tumor specific antigens. And as I said before, tumor associated antigens are present even in your normal uh, tissues. Of course, they are present in, uh, in, uh, in low quantities and they are not over expressed unlike in cancer. But whereas your TSAs is directly produced by your uh, cancer, by your tumor uh, cells. Your melan melanoma associated uh, antigen uh, such a major which is normally expressed and over expressed in testis and melanoma whereas uh, your HPV associated uh, the cervical and oropharyngeal cancers have high expression of your EC6 and your uh, E7 proteins of high risk HR is to be. Therefore, T, uh, T uh, the shade TAs in the patients with cancer make it a promising off the shelf immunotherapy of, uh, of option. So, you have you can you have simply something called as personalized see is not it like if you recollect we are talking about personalized therapy how an individual uh, can will have a different uh, receptors and a different uh, cancer profiling or stratification of the particular cancer or a tumor is done. In the same way if that is transformed is not it fantastic to talk about a personalized vaccine. Therefore, uh, your shared TAs main patients make a promising off the shelf immunotherapy of lamp, whereas uh, uh, your personalized cancer vaccines uh, they have gained the spotlight due to modern uh, high throughput. This is only because of your high throughput genome sequencing where exactly you are able to totally uh, pinpoint what exactly the tumor mutation is and then uh, have a, and then you are able to give a deeper understanding to your uh, neo antigen uh, production thereby uh, in informing can you have a personalized vaccine for that particular tumor type. These are the different uh, history and the key time points. First thing uh, the concept of your immunotherapy which was uh, we have already discussed uh, about this particular uh, uh, which was uh, inspired by the observations of your spontaneous cancer regressions after infections like your cholitoxins in 1893 then uh, Lloyd discovered that BCG prolongs the survival of mice with uh, cancer. Uh, then in 1984 Ho was uh, pioneer uh, use of your uh, vaccine which was made from uh, tumor cell lysis which increased the responses of autologous tumor cells in patients with colorectal cancer. Then following by you have the uh, TAA or the MAGE one was identified in the clinical trials of TAA based clinical uh, vaccine were conducted since then. Then uh, this was uh, melacine was the first approved to be market tumor lysate vaccine against your melanoma and then you have the uh, peptide based vaccine at 2000 very 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 important breakthrough which uh, which is uh, um, which uh, these peptide vaccines they served as a strategy to stimulate immune response against specific uh, antigens and then uh, we even uh, had the FDA fully approved dendritic cell vaccine that is your uh, superficial T for metastatic uh, ca castration resistant prostate cancer and then you have the several phase 3 clinical trials of therapeutic cancer va vaccines which are targeting TAE which and here again of course there are quite a few uh, failures here and then your new antigens were discovered here then the uh, uh, the first uh, human test of your conceptualized mrna RNA cancer vaccine was tested in 2017 then coming to 2023 uh, they have uh, uh, focused on uh, not only on vaccine formulations but also more effective delivery methods and then uh, combination of various um, uh, therapies for various combination along with other therapies also the phase 3 clinical trial of mRNA and personalized cancer vaccine then uh, with along with uh, pembrolizumab is conducted in patients with uh, post operative melanoma. This is by far how the history and the how the uh, different milestones how the ca cancer vaccines have evolved over the time period. So now what is the future more roadmap for this particular immune che uh, checkpoint uh, inhibitors do we need to have? 
strategies to select combinations for testing. As I said before, the different drugs, we have so many, we just discussed only two drugs, but what about if you have many more? Yes, we have many more drugs. How do you have a strategy for uh, selecting? Yes, this is very, very important. As I said, now again, again, we are stressing not one size fits for all. So, not a single combination would be taken up for treatment for a single cancer. Role of importance of biomarker. This is very, very, very important because these biomarkers are, uh, as we said, like PDL1 staining or the, yeah, they will predict how can the, how the patient's uh, outcome or what is the response to that particular combination of this particular inhibitors. Can we improve? How do we have uh, strategies to improve on your uh, clinical trial designs? Yes, this it is very, very important uh, to have uh, different clinical trials where many several uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors are uh, used. And then what are the regulatory challenges and opportunities? Yes, the challenge is lots of soils, uh, cytotoxicity uh, as like with other drugs, but, uh, but not um, its minimum. And uh, how does this uh, whole data has to be very authentic? Suppose several places are connecting clinical trials. Yes, they should be putting up and then that the uh, real world uh, evidence is available. This is um, the cartoons which uh, predicts how the T cells will uh, fight the cancer. Then you have exhausted T cells after the uh, fight and then, uh, then you have your reinvigorated T cells which again you know like with your immunotherapy or whatever you have given and then we haven't discussed here but if you have this IL-10 substitutions along with this particular uh, inhibitory molecule monoclonal antibodies yes there is an improvement in the immune response. This is by, for by far the sessions including your uh, introduction to immune therapy where we have uh, introduced to, to the different terminologies and the different uh, drugs um, and then uh, what exactly, uh, uh, how do this uh, mechanism of action, this particular two drugs we have seen for two different uh, and pathway, uh, different molecules such as your CTLA-4 and then your PDL one and the PD-1. Thank you.